Hello everybody, it's time for video number 12 of working on the Studebaker and I'm installing the nose cone right now. So uh, lots to do in this segment. Let's get to it. Now that I have the nose piece installed, I'm making the little filler pieces, the access panels, I guess you could call them, here and here. And uh, that's working out pretty good because those will be removable, then I can get in to work on the spring or whatever I need to do. So let's get those installed. I have the first inspection panel installed. Turned out pretty good. I think I'll do something around this opening too at some point. Let's work on the other side now. I'm starting to lay out the lines for the grill, for the bars. You can see I have the first line. And I made this uh, I sheared this up out of a just piece of aluminum. It's just a marking jig. It allows me to draw a line that's a half an inch wide. So uh, once I get this all laid out, then we'll start making the bars. Here you can see the layout lines. My goal is to do the top piece, a center piece, and then the border then I can fill in. At least that's the thinking at this point. We'll see if it works out. Now that I'm focused on this trim for the grill, I needed to get a couple things a little bit closer to the action here. I have the uh, metal bender here, which does a nice job on this aluminum. And then I have the metal cutting chop saw. So, there's uh, about 40 to 50 pieces for this grill, so uh, to minimize the walking back and forth, I just wanted to get everything close. Uh, you can see where I'm starting to shape the metal, and, and I have an idea for uh, installing these trim pieces, so let me show you that now. So my idea for holding on this trim is um, I set the drill to drill just the correct depth, then uh, I'm tapping the hole with an 832. I have the, this uh, threaded rod here, these cap screws. They'll thread in enough threads to make it worthwhile. I'll put some Loctite in there and then uh, an 832 nut. So uh, these are a little bit long, although they'd work. I could knock them down a quarter of an inch and they'd still be plenty long. But I think that'll be a good way of holding on the trim, nice and secure. And of course it could be removable if I ever had to, had to make repairs or whatever. So that's the plan of attack. See how it works out. Okay, here's the first trim piece. I decided to uh, stop right here. Uh, that way if I ever take the nose off, uh, I won't have to remove the trim. Uh, truthfully, I would have preferred that this was continuous, but that's all right, I guess. So the first piece is done. There's four on each side. Um, I'm going to install those before I attack the front end, and that'll get me used to drilling and tapping and installing by the time I get to the tougher pieces. Okay, let's just keep plugging away here. All right, the top trim piece is installed on both sides. And uh, 
I've determined that I can't reach the machine screw to put the nut on. It's just too far for me to reach under here. And uh, truthfully, I would have trouble getting to all of these. So I'm going to remove this top, draw out the rivets, and that will give me the access that I need. Let's do that now. Get that off of there. After 52 rivets, the top lifted right off. And this is going to work out well because I can easily reach in here and uh, get to every single nut and bolt. Okay, that's going to help a lot. This bender is a handy machine. Uh, if I need the leverage, I can slip this in here and I can finesse that thing around real nice with just a little bit of pressure. If I need to bend it a little tighter in the corner, I can slip it in between these two and I can work it. It's uh, actually working out pretty well. And for a soft arc, I can just bend it over my knee. Okay, so uh, let's continue on. Yeah, that's looking good. Well, I'm happy to report that the first eight pieces of trim went on very well. It didn't take long to cut them, and, and there's a slight arc to them. Uh, that was easy to do. I mainly over bent that over my knee. And then I drilled them and tapped them and bolted them in place and uh, took all of uh, one evening to accomplish. So this will take a little longer, but it's the same theory. All right, eight down, 52 pieces to go. Well, it took me better part of a week to install these two pieces. I don't know why I get myself into these things. It was a definite challenge, but uh, I think I have all the tools and I've developed the technique to install the rest of these. The next thing I'm going to do is add the center strip that runs all the way down. I finished installing this piece. That went easy. I had to file it a little bit here to get it to fit the contour. I also made these two pieces here. You see this has a little curve to match. It goes on here like this. And then this one for the other side. And then I can make a piece that'll come down. I'll have a little radius piece right here to run over. All right. This bender does a nice job of uh, bending it on the flat. I can bring this right around. Not too fast so I don't break it. I have a reference line. See it? Puts a real nice radius on there. Okay, I'm glad that worked out. I was worried about that. I had this smaller drill press uh, stashed away in storage so I brought it out. It's not as refined as my other one but and it's a little noisier but it gets the job done just fine and it's right in here close to what's going on. Okay, 
so now I can tap the hole with the 832, a little bit of cutting oil. And break the chip. And there's the bottom. I got some shorter set screws. These um, 832 by half, I got a hundred of them for four dollars. A hundred of them. At Ace, they sell each one for 50 cents. So, if you, this is Copper State Nut and Bolt. It's worth it to go to the Nut and Bolt Company. And then this, of course, threads right in. Very nice. Works out beautiful. All right. Well, I'm making progress. I installed and the two curved pieces and then these two pieces right in here and uh, I think each this strip here probably took me two or three hours to install because it's just all trial and fit and hand filing this one went a little quicker but still took quite a while I think at this point I'll fill in here this should be a little easier I have to you know hand file to fit here but back here it's a straight cut so that certainly helps all right let's keep at this well I have to say it's shaping up I have these two installed and uh, now I'm working my way down I have these two um, it's very time-consuming but it's cool looking all right, all I can do is just keep at it. I've developed my technique uh, sufficiently enough that I'm doing four at a time to help speed this up. So uh, I'm going to bolt these on now. I'm getting quicker at uh, laying these in, but uh, I still have a ways to go. Okay. This is taking shape nicely. I'll just keep at it before you know it. I'll be down to the last row. Uh, in the meantime though, since this is taking a while, I'm working on other things also. Let me show you the next project. One of the features of the monocar that I like are the wheel discs. Uh, and I want to do a set for the Studebaker. Um, I made this set back in 2013, so it's been a while, and I was watching my old videos to help me remember. Um, so I've been gathering the supplies and uh, getting the setup going. So um, let me show you the direction I'm heading with these discs. I uh, printed a few photos uh, that I'd taken six or seven years ago when I made this original set, and uh, you can see here where. I made a cone shaped pattern, then I covered it with fiberglass and uh, trial fit it to the monocar. You see the monocar was still in raw metal at the raw aluminum at that point. Um, then I sanded them and primered them and you can see how they fit the rim. And here's what they looked like when I first installed them. I uh, used uh, Velcro to hold them on, but that just didn't work out. Um, now they're held on by the uh, zip ties, which has worked out very well. So um, I'm going to walk you through the process here as I make this set. So uh, let me show you the initial setup here. Okay, I have a front and a rear rim here. Uh, these will come in handy to make sure I get the shape of the cone correct because it's slightly different here to here and when you flip them over it's the same thing on the other side so there's four unique shapes uh, but they all start the same way and that's with a circle that is uh, 16 and 7 eighths so uh, with a simple piece of cardboard and a nail and a hole 
half the distance and I can just run around it and that is the starting point so I'll cut that out I have to make eight of these this is just regular poster board nothing special so that's step one I need eight circles the uh, diameter of the circle was um, 16 and 7 eighths and uh, I've laid it inside the rim and just holding it down with these nails so that it lays flat and it, it overlaps slightly here as it creates the cone shape so I'll tape this together and uh, that will maintain the shape of the cone if I didn't have these nails here it, it wouldn't be true so right now it's laying in the rim real nice I also cut out this center hole at two inches so this is a front rim outside okay I'm gonna tape this together now and see how it looks all right it looks like a cone to me uh, this is just scotch tape here on both sides and it uh, overlaps a little bit so I'll drape fiberglass over this and once it hardens uh, I'll have the beginning of a wheel disc there'll probably be one layer of six ounce cloth on the outside and on the inside a couple layers of epoxy so uh, uh, looking up let's just keep moving along here one thing I learned when I did the first set of wheel discs a few years ago was that uh, they warped a little bit uh, from the moisture of the resin and uh, mainly that was because this is fairly thin material so I'm actually going to use two layers in this set and that should uh, keep them more uniform so here's one that I'm getting ready to cut out. This is a 16 and 7 8 circle and that's a 2 inch circle. This is for the front outside. Okay. I'll use a spray adhesive to put these together and then I can offset the seams and uh, it feels more substantial. That's what I was hoping for. It needs to be strong enough to hold the weight of the glass and resin until it sets. Okay, I'm happy with that. Here I have the first two uh, cones, discs made. These are the outside fronts. So that's two down and six to go. And then I can begin to mess around with the uh, fiberglass. Okay, keep moving along. Here I have a right front inside and a right front outside. And uh, it's hard to see here, but it, they are a different height, a different shape of cone. Very subtle, but nonetheless different. Okay, I have all four parts cut for the fronts. Now I can work on the rears. I'm liking the looks of this. These are going to turn out just fine. I managed to finish making all the discs. I got them cut out and taped together into their cone shape and cut the center holes depending on whether it was an inside or outside. I also picked up the fiberglass cloth. It's a six ounce cloth. Uh, which is what I used uh, from the first batch uh, for the monocar so that worked out pretty pretty well so uh, next order of business is to cut the cloth I have them all marked out here and then I can start the process of laying them up I have the fiberglass sheets cut to size and uh, I've laid out the discs, four of them here, on the, this melamine board. It's, you know, the inside of uh, c cabinets. Um, and it's smooth and the resin 
uh, will release from it easily. So I'll have to wet this out and then tomorrow I can trim it and, and uh, see how it looks. So it's uh, one pump of each is the mix ratio and this is extra slow, it gives me time to do multiples. So one of those and, and one of those is the correct mix. Okay. My plan is to put a thin coat of epoxy resin, then I'll lay the glass over that, and uh, then I'll wet out the cloth. I'm going to do one layer of glass, but multiple layers of uh, resin until I get a nice sandable smooth surface. It took me about 30 minutes to wet these out and I'm happy with the results. All right. Okay, it's the next morning, and it's uh, sufficiently dry. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'll trim it with some scissors. So far, so good. Ready for another coat of the epoxy resin. I'm getting ready to glass the other four, and uh, I trim it. Trim the first four. And I just finished applying a second coat of epoxy resin. I'm making good progress applying the resin on the top surface, but uh, now I'm going to put a coat on the underside. That'll protect this paper from moisture. And uh, once that dries, I'll still add another coat or two to the top. It's getting better all the time though. Just about ready to be sanded. I finished applying two coats of resin on the inside of these discs um, and I just finished sanding them. Um, they're pretty much finished. I, I'll have to put some primer or some paint on the inside but that's good enough. Uh, my attention now will be to continue on this outside um, 
Let's see, these have three coats and I'm going to sand this lightly and then put a fourth coat on. Uh, and each time I add a layer, it, they're building up nicely. So uh, pretty soon I have a reasonably smooth surface to accept the paint. Okay, continuing on. I'm on the home stretch on these wheel discs. I finished uh, sanding them and now I'm putting on the fourth coat of resin and that should be sufficiently thick to provide a, a nice finish once I do the final sanding. Okay, let's get these things done so I can get them in primer and installed on the wheels. Yeah, these are looking pretty good. They have their final coat of epoxy resin on them and uh, I'm real happy with it. This should sand up beautifully. Alright. I finished spraying the primer on the inside of all eight discs and uh, now I'm laying out the location of uh, where I'll drill the holes for the zip ties that will hold the two together. I made this little pattern and I just worked my way around. Now on the inside discs I need to uh, cut out a spot for the air valve so I'll use this to mark a location and cut it out. I wanted to do all this drilling and cutting before I did the final sanding and primer work. Okay, let's continue on laying these out. I need to cut these holes here for the air valve and I'm just going to use a router with a straight cutter bit and I'm going to freehand it. I've already got one started here. Yeah, that's going to work out just fine. I'm installing the zip ties now. I've got two of them installed. This is the uh, right front. Just have to make sure that it lines up with the air valve. But uh, I think they look all right. They're not perfect, but they'll do. Okay. This thing is taking on a personality. <laughs> uh, I had this vision in my mind of what this thing would look like, but it's turning out a little different than my vision, but I like it. Oh yeah, this is, this is gonna be nice once it's all painted and finished. I still have to finish that grill and a few other things, steering wheel, exhaust, and intake. But it won't be long. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm knocking things off the list. All right, that's the end of segment number 12. Uh, looking forward to continuing on uh, in segment number 13. So it won't be long. We'll have this thing finished and into paint. 
Uh, so as always, I appreciate that you watch and follow along with what I'm doing here with these cycle carts. Thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you next time.